A few years ago, I landed a model rocket. I did this using a solid rocket motor, which usually can't be throttled, so either you have to get really lucky on timing, or you have to fix the throttling thing. I started off trying to mess with something called the Krushnik effect. This is a phenomenon that occurs when you extend a tube past the exit plane of the nozzle. The exhaust gases coming out of the nozzle interact with this tube, and that decreases our thrust. So if we vary the length this tube can extend, in theory, we can throttle a solid rocket motor. I ran a few tests using this setup, varying the amount that I extended the tube up to two centimeters, and unfortunately, what I found is that the results were not that intense. Normalizing for ignition time, this 10 to 15% throttle range is not enough for us to reliably land the rocket. For my next approach, I turned to missile defense. A while ago, we developed the technology to shoot down ICBMs, and part of that technology involves an exoatmospheric kill vehicle. This little guy uses thrusters to move itself around in space, but you'll notice that the thrusters aren't throttling, they're simply turning on or off. Even in this testing footage with 1G of gravity, we're just pulsing the thrusters, and this is called pulse width modulation. It's also called like duty cycle control and a bunch of other stuff. Don't come for me in the comments. So I thought that I would give this a shot. I milled out this piece of aluminum to block the thrust from the solid rocket motor, and I designed a mechanism that would push the aluminum in front of the nozzle. However, during testing, it was quickly revealed to me that I forgot to Google the melting temperature of aluminum versus the combustion temperature of black powder. So this solution does not work. After this, I had one more solution in mind, and it rhymes with high temperature ceramic. These two blockers are pushed into the exhaust with servos on either side of the rocket motor, and they allow for a little bit of throttle control. The high temperature ceramic doesn't melt in the exhaust plume of the black powder rocket motor, and because we can change how much we're impinging on the exhaust plume, we can control the exact amount of thrust that comes out of the motor. This plot shows us the expected thrust curve versus the thrust curve we get with different servo commands. It looks pretty good, but how repeatable is this? I ran a number of tests with this setup, and because these blockers don't melt, they can be reused for each one. The results here are kind of remarkably consistent. You can see each step from the servo in the resultant thrust curve, and while there's clearly some variation between each motor and each setup, this is some pretty deep throttling capability, and it's very consistent. Let me know if you would have solved this problem differently, and follow me or I will throttle you.